I was legitimately surprised to find out how many people were actually using griffins in high level RTA. I'm not talking like fighter 1, fighter 2. I'm talking at least, at least C2, C3, G1, G2, G3. This one right here started off with a bang. This one is G3 True Will. He is a former legend, uh, RTA legend. And he is using... It's not the first time we've ever seen. I'm just going to say this right away because I know you guys are going to say, it's not the first time we've seen the water griffin before. I know we've seen the water griffin before. It's still, there's all of the other ones are being used too. It's not like it's just the water griffin. It's like the other, like Bernard's used in some cleave teams, which we're going to take a look at. Uh, I was more surprised that the, the light and dark ones were actually being used in some instances as well. So we're going to take a look at all of those, all of those today, but... Started off with some G3 gameplay, which he actually has some more battles with this thing. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see some more as well. We have in the past seen this unit, the Water Griffin, Con the Water Griffin, uh, with Gianna. So the reason that it's actually run with Gianna is because to counter Gianna, you're bringing in things like this Water Mermaid right here. You're bringing in Juno. You're bringing in. Uh, hey gang, you're bringing in water and fire units generally to counter Gianna, and this unit right here, the uh, the skill 2 that cycles his attack age, and then the skill 3 that does damage based on the enemy's debuffs, really nice, he can cycle a lot of attack age, just like the Gianna and the Ciara teams, right? And then uh, he does big damage on top of all the amount of debuffs, and he also has element advantage to the things that they're uh, picking in here. Now here is where it gets... Kind of sketchy. We got a fire and we got a light unit against two water units that heal. I forgot she had that uh, animation. It's kind of cre it's kind of creepy out of nowhere. If you're not expecting the new uh, the new animation thing, it's kind of weird. I was not expecting that. So let's see. I think at this point is just RNG. Welcome to Summoners War. Welcome to RTA. This is just going to be decided based on RNG now because both players knew what they were doing, but ooh. Gets the sleep. So, do they cycle enough attack age? Do they get enough CC? Do they decrease the attack age enough with the uh, Timo? Apparently, I'm saying that her name wrong. I don't know how to say her name aside from it looks like Timo. That is how I would say it in English, but apparently it's not an English name. No surprise there. It's a Japanese name. But, yeah, apparently I'm saying that name wrong. So, I'll figure, I'll figure out eventually how to say it. This, mm, so close, the HP going down. This is just a battle of efficiency and hoping to Violet Brock. That's, that's all this is. Now she's going to take this down right here. And now is she going to hit, she gets the stun. She gets the suppression on the water unit, which is usually built with high resistance and GG. Next match, this one, they're just hoping that the opponent is not going to be on Will Runes. We saw something similar in SWC. At C3, though, you have to kind of hope your opponent is not on Will Runes. In SWC, they did their homework and they found out that their opponent wasn't on Will Runes. So they're like, you know what? They can be as fast as they want. I'm just going to bring in this Spectra. They're never going to outspeed this Spectra's crazy high base speed. And here, they got three units that were they just happen to have. Three units that were not on Will Runes. So, attack power break, speed break, attack age reduction. Huge opener, and they really couldn't outspeed. I mean, the Daphnis really not going to outspeed a Spectra. Daphnis got pretty low base uh, base speed compared to Spectra, having one of the highest base speeds in the game. I know you're going to disagree with me. You're going to be like, that's the highest base speed. I mean, Leo... <laughs> Leo... I think it doesn't even matter at this point, because they're just going to win anyway. Unfortunately, I really wanted the Spectra team to win, but they still did have a good showing. The Spectra did what it was supposed to do. They caught the opponent off, or maybe they don't win. Hold on. They, they caught the opponent off. Yeah, no, they they definitely going to win this. They're definitely going to win this. But they did catch the opponent off guard by not having will runes. And you know what? I think some of you can afford to YOLO. If you're like, you know what? I don't have the crazy speed in the, in the world. I know I'm going to lose this match. That means Spectra. He's on crazy fast swift, and maybe I'll catch my opponent off will. So, you know, things that you would otherwise just normally lose regardless. Like, I, let me at least YOLO it. Roll the dice. I got some bad news for you guys. The Shaman replays are actually expired because anytime Summoner's War updates the versions, the previous RT replays are expired, so we actually can't see that. But we can see some Varus over here, which is very, very slow Varus. So... 
Oh, he's a revenge vet. Hold on, he's a revenge vet. That's why he's slow. So Varus' damage, if I recall correctly, is based on his speed and defense. So he's just a revenge Varus. This should be interesting. So you're going to have the fire Ryu revenging, or maybe not because he's got attack power break. Although he could still revenge here. Does he do it though? We get the stun. I mean, we don't get the stun. He gets the stun, whoever. Um, gets the revenges, obliterates Charlotte. This is so sneaky. This is so sneaky revenge. Revenge Varus. I would not, I would not. If this was me, I would not have expected a revenge Varus today. I mean, obviously, I'm still not. <laughs> I, I am watching, and I would, did not expect a revenge Varus. This is so sneaky. All right, so he's got the glancing. Oh, man. That's, wow. GG. Very clever, actually. Very clever. Next battle, we're going to see some Bernard gameplay. Let's see if this is going to be a revenge. Oh, my God. This is so toxic. Okay. Well, they still could outspeed. They ban the issue. They still have the two speed leads. Is the Gianna or the Chiwu going to be faster than the Bernard? Oh, my goodness. That's a fast Gianna. Well, Bernard's got higher base speed. That's the reason I'm saying it's a fast Gianna. So, gets the invincibility over there. Thunderbolt. Decent enough damage. I mean, you think about, like, Kali being the one that's doing the damage in this situation. But the, uh, the Bernard does decent damage. The Jameer does decent damage. They're just going to hopefully cycle a crap ton of turns. Tectonic Shift against the Oliver. Didn't crit! Oh, that was so brutal! <laughs> Did it crit? Was that the game changing uh, not crit? Oh my god. Oh, and they didn't land it either. They didn't land it on the. Uh, that would have been, been huge if they. Oh, they got the stun though. They got the stun. They crit now. They get an additional turn. Hold on. Can they take out this Chiwu? They got a crit against the Chiwu. I don't think they're going to take out the Chiwu though. Yeah. Just that little, that li the one crit versus not crit. That would have been a very different situation. Sad. Feels bad, man. Now we're back to the red stars, which means we're also back to Khan, the water griffin. He seems to be the one most used in super high level, uh, super high level gameplay. Because if we're seeing Bernard, we're seeing Cleves. If we're seeing uh, Spectra, we're seeing YOLO versus someone that they feel is definitely going to outspeed them. And just hope that they get turn one so this one we're gonna see the fire yeah we're gonna see the fire uh on miyuji going right after that to uh to copy all of the debuffs on all of the different units and then do some big damage even through that shield does such big damage oh wow all the debuffs <laughs> just extra debuffs on top of extra debuffs on top of extra debuffs and the beautiful thing about the water griffin is you could just build him tanky and he still does a bunch of damage. You just have to make sure that you have stacked a whole bunch of debuffs on. He really went for it. He's like, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna make sure I get this water griffin. This thing is dangerous. That was the, that was the biggest threat on the team is the water griffin. There we go. GG. But yeah, he just you gotta make sure you got a whole bunch of um debuffs on the enemy to do that big damage with skill three. Next match, first picks Kali. Opponent stole the Ashir, which means that he comes in, of course, with the Dominic, because as we all know, Dominic is a really great unit when you're contesting speed. I was not expecting the Dominic at all. That's that's the last thing that was on my mind. I'm like, they got some fire unit. Well, he didn't, he actually picked the, uh, the Antares after the Dominic was picked, but that is not the unit I was expecting to get picked of all of the things here. That's that's not what I thought was going to happen. Although they did still outspeed the Ashir with the Bernard, which means that they've been farming a lot of uh, they've been farming a lot of giants B12. But I suppose if you're going to go into RTA with a fast speed based cleave, you would be farming a lot of uh, giants B12. So that's not at all surprising. So we're back to True Whale, which means that we are back to seeing some con gameplay. So we. LDs and LDs on both sides. Bans out the Narsha, bans out the Oliver because Oliver is still more toxic than Devil. That's not what I thought was gonna. That's a Swift. That's a Swift. I mean, that's a Volantis, but he is a he is a Swift Volantis. That's the situation there. I was not expecting that Volantis to take turn one. I was expecting the Gianna to take turn one and Volantis to be on despair and come in and cut things. But that is a Swift because he's not stunning anything. That's a Swift Volantis. 
Usually you see them on despair. That's the only reason I, I, I keep getting all crazy about like, oh my god, guys, that's a strip for Lantis. So this is so toxic. All of these debuffs. All of these debuffs. Pursuit just obliterates. Just obliterates there. Wow. This con's gonna do some heavy damage here. He's gonna do he's gonna do a lot of crazy nonsense. This Gianna is oh never mind. I thought that, that was gonna hit the uh Volantis actually. I was gonna say he's, he's gonna steal that uh, that Volantis. Nora actually still does heal, so they do have sustain on that team as well. Every time Nora does skill one, she's gonna heal. That's interesting. He's really enjoying this team, and it seems to be working for him. We are back to Revenge Varus now, and this is what I really want to see. I want to see more of this guy. What a toxic, toxic, aggressive team coming in. They're bringing all things that counter, <laughs> especially the Revenge Varus. He's not, because you know the other guy's not. Oh my goodness, Leo almost double tapped that, uh, that Dark Striker. Wow, two units on that team are almost completely, three units are almost completely dead at this point. That's ridiculous. Combo attack. This thing's going down in a second, isn't he? He's just... Go oh my goodness. This is this is amazing. Wow. I am really enjoying this Revenge Varus. This next match, we're going to see some more con. However, the rest of the team is slightly different than... Or slightly completely different than the, uh, the teams that we're previously seeing with Khan. We do have two LDs. We have the Cadiz. We have Oliver. We have Ragdoll. No, I wasn't just saying Oliver as if he was an LD, although he may as well be. So, Cadiz strips two things. By the way, if you guys are coming back to the game from being gone for a while, Cadiz strips things now. He used to be a thing that you would see in, for example, Dragons, but now he is so much better. He strips, he, atta he attack age uh, decreases. He always used to heal, but now he, uh, he also does the strip and attack age decrease. So, or, sorry, absorb, attack age absorb now we're back up to g3 taking a look at some more true whale gameplay so this is something that i want you guys to pay close attention to is that true whale has access to every ld5 under the sun maybe not every ld5 under the sun but many 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 ld5s he brought in a water four star and a water three star second awakened griffin the water four star gets banned the thing is it's not just about having I, th I think a lot of you get under this impression that you need all of these ld5s to be good at the game i know some of you just want ld5s because you've been playing the game for like forever and still haven't even gotten one and i do agree that that's kind of unfair however some of you also are under the impression that you need all of these ld5s to win at the game it's not about having the ld5s it's about using the right unit for the job so he's here picking the right unit for the job and he's trying to come up with some toxic combos which he's successfully coming up with some of these toxic combinations and that's the th and you see that the hern was the one out of all of those all those uh maybe not all the ld nat fives but two ld nat fives there and hern the water dryad is the one that got banned so it's not all about the ld fives it's all about making sure you bring the right unit for the job and making sure <laughs> that you draft correctly and have the rune efficiency to back it up. So anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So, man, I'm really, I, I really like that, that revenge Griffin. The revenge Varus was my favorite part of the whole video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you as always in the next one.